two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff of the maiden voyage of Endeavour on a satellite rescue mission. For the past two decades, Space Shuttle Endeavour, the youngest vehicle in NASA's shuttle fleet, has symbolically carried the torch for Challenger, the orbiter it replaced. NASA is preparing for the final flight of Endeavour, a trip to the International Space Station during a time frame in which astronauts and cosmonauts are celebrating the 50th anniversaries of the first human spaceflight by Yuri Gagarin and the first American spaceflight by Alan Shepard, as well as the 30th anniversary of the first space shuttle flight, STS-1 Columbia. This historic 25th flight of Endeavour will include delivery of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, a unique instrument that is hoped to unveil clues to the origin of our universe as it searches for antimatter, dark matter, and exotic cosmic particles from the space station. When Endeavour launches on NASA's 36th mission to the ISS, the STS-134 crew of six astronauts will begin a mission to stock the station with spare parts and a world-class stellar research instrument just months before the shuttle program comes to an end. Endeavour will deliver the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer 2 and the Express Logistics Carrier 3 to the station. This will also be the first shuttle flight to conduct a re-rendezvous but not docked to the space station to test the performance of new navigation sensors designed for the Orion spacecraft. During four scheduled spacewalks, Endeavour's crew will conduct the last spacewalks by shuttle crew members to prepare the ISS for its next decade of service. I've flown on Endeavour before, so I'm excited to fly on it again. And my brother's flown on Endeavour. Navy Captain Mark Kelly is the commander of Endeavour's crew of six astronauts. He flew on Endeavour as the pilot of his first space flight, STS-108, in 2001. In January 2011, Kelly's wife, Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, was critically wounded during a community outreach event in Tucson, Arizona. Kelly took a brief leave from the agency but returned to mission training a few weeks later. The pilot of Endeavour is retired Air Force Colonel Greg H. Johnson, making his second space flight. He will be at the controls as Endeavour undocks from the station. He flew on Endeavour as the pilot of STS-123 in 2008. Air Force Colonel Mike Fink is Mission Specialist 1. A veteran of two long-duration missions on the International Space Station, he commanded the station complex on Expedition 18. During this mission, his first aboard the shuttle, he will conduct three spacewalks. Mission Specialist 2 is Italian Air Force Colonel Roberto Vittori, twice flown aboard a Russian Soyuz as an ISS visitor and part of the crew that delivered fresh Soyuz spacecraft to the outpost. As the last non-American astronaut scheduled to fly on the shuttle, Vittori will meet up with Paolo Nespoli on the ISS for two Italian astronauts on orbit at the same time. Dr. Drew Feustel, Mission Specialist 3, is making his first voyage to the ISS after performing three spacewalks during STS-125, the final Hubble Space Telescope servicing mission. On this flight, he will serve as lead spacewalker for three additional EVAs. Mission Specialist 4 is Dr. Greg Shamatov. He served as an ISS flight engineer for six months during Expedition 17 and 18, returning to Earth on Endeavour. He will perform two spacewalks. We've got a whole list of mission objectives, probably 30 things on the list. But the big objectives is to get the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer installed, on the outside of the space station. The Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer 1, a simplified cosmic ray detector, flew on STS-91 in June 1998. 
The AMS-2 is a first-of-its-kind instrument designed to study the fundamental nature of the universe and will allow us for the first time to search for antimatter and dark matter theorized to exist. Nobel physicist Dr. Samuel Ting leads the team of over 500 scientists from 16 countries. I started uh, studying physics. Soon after I achieved my degree as a test pilot, I went back and complete my degree. And ironically, uh, my teacher was uh, a Professor Battiston that is uh, the deputy chief of the AMS experiment. So it may appear as a, a very strange coincidence that today I will be the one to take this unique piece of hardware, take it from the bay of the shuttle and uh, give it to install on the, on, on the station. On flight day four, Vittori and Feustel, operating the shuttle arm, will grapple the AMS-2 and hand it off to the Greggs, Johnson and Shamatov, operating the station arm for robotic installation onto the station's S3 truss. The second of two components that Endeavour's crew will attach to the ISS is the ELC-3 pallet, the Express Logistics Carrier 3. ELC-3, similar to ELCs 1 and 2 delivered on STS-129, includes a full ATA, ammonia tank assembly, two SASs, S-band antenna support assemblies, and a spare arm for Dexter, the special purpose Dextrous manipulator. On flight day three, Vittori and Fink will unberth the ELC-3 with the shuttle arm and hand it off to station arm operators Shamatov and Johnson for installation on the station's P-3 truss. STS-134 will be the first shuttle flight to re-rendezvous with the ISS and to fly a rendezvous trajectory to mimic Orion's trajectory. The purpose of STORM, sensor test for Orion RELNAV risk mitigation, is to evaluate the performance of Orion relative navigation sensors for future spacecraft. While Kelly is flying Endeavour, Feustel will monitor STORM sensors from a laptop on the flight deck during rendezvous, undocking, and the re-rendezvous after the traditional ISS fly-around. Endeavour will pull away from station and execute several maneuvers before approaching on a different trajectory to allow the storm vision navigation sensors to gather data. Although Endeavour will not actually redock with ISS, it will fly to a close approach of 1,044 feet below and 300 feet behind the station before executing a third separation burn and departing station for the final time. Then when we come up back in front of the space station again, we're then going to do these series of burns where we're going to fall behind the space station, you know, a couple hundred thousand feet. And then we're going to come back in doing a profile that's actually quite similar to what Apollo used for a rendezvous. During STS-134, Feustel, Fink, and Shamatov will take turns stepping outside the hatch for four scheduled spacewalks. EVA-1 on flight day five focuses on MISSIES, Materials International Space Station experiments. Feustel and Shamatov will return the MISSI 7A and 7B pallets from the ELC-2 and transfer MISSI-8 to the same location. The idea is to expose these things to the the harsh environment of space for a long period and see what happens. For EVA-2 on flight day 7, Fink and Feustel will refill one of the station's port radiators with ammonia. They will also clean and lubricate the station's port sarge, the solar array rotary joint. Prior to EVA-3, Feustel and Fink will test a new protocol combining the airlock campout pre-breathe, the exercise pre-breathe, and the spacesuit itself. We were introduced to uh, a pre-breathe option uh, by Mike Gernhardt, uh, uh, an astronaut in the Corps, and it's called the In-Suit Light Exercise Pre-Breathe Protocol. We call it ISLE, I-S-L-E. For EVA-3 on Flight Day 9, Feustel and Fink will install a power and data grapple fixture for the station arm on the Zarya module. They will also run two Y cables for redundant power supply to the Russian portion of the station. During EVA-4, Shamatov and Fink will transfer and install the OBSS, the shuttle arm's extension boom, to the station's S-1 truss for potential future use aboard the ISS. We 
have come very far in the last 50 years from not being able to fly in space to landing on the moon and building this incredible facility in orbit and routinely flying you know, people up and down into low Earth orbit. It is amazing how much we've accomplished in 50 years and it took so many people to make all that possible. It's an unbelievable honor to kind of be the representative of, of that generation of dreamers for, for me. We have a, a huge honor and responsibility to make this the best mission that we can to honor all of the engineers all the way from the pre-STS-1 uh, at the, the very beginning in the 1970s when we started to design the space shuttle. All the effort, the blood, the sweat, the tears that have gone into making the space shuttle program as wonderful as it has to, to fly on the penultimate mission and to do it well and to do it with, uh, with the honor of, of those that came before us.